another speaker or not have a speaker. And so the question becomes, um, you know, the, the client always has three choices when they, when they want to book a speaker. One is on the far left, say, they can get a free speaker. The politicians, the local person, somebody who wants to do something. That person, if you think about it, does not have to be good. They're there. They're a warm body. They'll fill up the, the time you need. The Rotary Club needs a speaker every week. That's 15 minutes. You know, where you come becomes the main thing. You don't pay anything for that free speaker. Go to the complete opposite end to celebrity, truly celebrity speakers. And that means is they don't know what the topic is going to be. <laughs> Probably they don't know this, but they know that name. And when they hear that name is there, they, uh, the people will get excited. Now, if, you, if your people are coming every, this is what's good for professional speakers, not celebrity speakers. If you're, if the people are coming to a meeting or, or a certain event every year, they may not care who the speaker is. They're coming because they belong to that group or because they support this particular project or, you know, charity. They're, they are coming. You probably don't need a named speaker. That, for that meeting planner, uh, having a named speaker, the fee may be exorbitant. And there's no need in it because the people are coming anyway. But if you've got to sell tickets, um, draw a crowd, that name recognition is very important. If you go to this far right side and use a celebrity speaker, there's something else a person must know. And we all have to be aware of this as speakers. That person does not have to be good. They're coming because of their celebrity name. And you could have a tremendous author, but in front of people, they're not, they're not dynamic speakers. Mm -hmm. Could we write like they can? No, but of course not. Their name sells the tickets. And so the, if the meeting planners are in the habit of having a name, uh, they get a plus if that name can also speak well. If you have the number one golfer in the world come in, a lot of people are going to be excited. Then are they as excited at the end of the speech, or do they shrug and say, well, he's a golfer, she's a golfer? So, But then in the middle, between the free speech and the really high celebrity speaker, which you know the fees that some of the people come in and get more power to them, mm -hmm. but you have the professional speaker, and that's us. And the difference is you will have to pay us varying fees. Your group may have never heard of us. Doesn't matter. You can you can afford the fee, and but the one difference is that doesn't the free speaker and then the real celebrity speaker. The difference is for professional speakers, which is what I've been for fifty three years. You darn well better be good because that's the only reason you're there. Wow. And and the meeting plan. So there's three different and and then meeting planners said none is right and none is wrong, but we are the group on which credibility falls on our shoulders because there is truly we're not famous golfers most of us we're not famous on tv we're not household names but but the meeting planner's job is on the line and so when we get there what we want people to do when we leave is go to the meeting planner and say where did you find her she's fantastic do you see the difference in the three? Oh, absolutely. so when you say celebrity speaker the difference for me is for years, years until this all happened to me, I never really had to market for programming. I marketed to meeting planners. Mm -hmm. If the meeting planner knew who I the joke has always been, give me 50 meeting planners in an audience, more than 2,000 of the employees. Who go, give me the people in front of me who are going to book another speaker. That's what we, that's what we want. But... But the way that it works out now for it's totally different. People in what's happened to me in the last five years, and I say what's going to happen to Willie and several others, is people don't just go to their convention. Uh, see, they may you may go to your convention and have the breakfast speech. You're going to get your fee 
whether anybody comes or not. And if they make the mistake of putting their big party the night before your speech, you have a low attendance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's not your fault. It's the planning of the event. But for what I'm doing now, t I, I think they're cousins, but they're different. People make a decision to call Ticketmaster, for example, mm -hmm. buy two tickets to come and hear Jeannie Robertson, travel to another city, in many cases fly to another city to see a show. And the difference is when the, the, that you can still fill a hall, but you're having to do the marketing and your name is should pull the, 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 um, the people to do that. And the theaters are interested in people who can do that. So, so Al McCree approached me at NSA five or six years ago, maybe six, and I have been doing some shows with Carl Hurley, and I've always known the difference between doing a show and a speech. With a speech, I can tell the same stories I tell in a show, but the people who come to a show don't want to come and get a message. They don't want to be told to set your goals. They're coming for entertainment if they're coming to one of my shows. And at the speech, if you're giving a speech, put on a speaker's hat, then you you can't just go in there. You have to do what you and the meeting planner have agreed that that's what you'll do for that meeting. And you can use the same stories to illustrate it. I can. But they got to leave with something. They can't walk out at a convention or a business meeting and say, she was hilarious. What was that all about for us? Mm -hmm. do, do you see the difference? Oh, yes. I'm leading up to I mean, there's a big difference, and you got to know what it is. So Al said to me, came up to me at NSA, I'd known him for 20 years, and he said, I think you can sell your stories on iTunes. And I said, I, uh, and who's going to even know they're there? Mm -hmm. uh, why would that happen? And he said, I don't know, but I think we can try. Number one, you wrote your own material. You're not using old jokes. And so you can tell them as stories. And I, he says, let's cut a deal, and, and I'll take a percentage, you take a percentage, but... No, nobody until somebody makes fifty dollars or something. Mm -hmm. So for three or four months, I, I didn't, I didn't get anything. We didn't know how to market it. We was, I'm still speaking, you know, and doing this, and I also figured it out. And then all of a sudden, I know I called him. I said, "Is my fifty dollar check come in yet?" <laughs> and he said, "No." But then all of a sudden, after four or five months, we did figure out how to market. So now, for the first time, I ha as a speaker, this is my fifty third year of paid signed contracts. As a speaker, for the first time other than a little product, I had a way to make money without being there. And I liked that. I, I liked that a lot. But what happened at the same time, this is where the name recognition came in. I started airing on Sirius uh, XM satellite radio. Are you familiar with that? I am, yes. Yeah, well, I started airing daily, up to 12 and 15 times a day. Wow. And all of a sudden, now here's where the difference in the two things we do come in. I've had one woman that's run my office for 37 years, Tony Mary. She comes to the convention. She's come to the convention since 1980. And she came to me and said, when I started airing on um, three things happened at the same time, iTunes, Sirius Satellite Radio's Family Comedy Channel, which is where I want to be positioned. I don't want to be on a raw dog. Uh, you know, I do a joke about not being on Raw Dog. And that was the second thing. And the third thing is uh, we posted a clip on YouTube, and it went viral. Wow. So all of a sudden, the phone is ringing, and people are saying to Tony, when is Jeannie's, quote, show, unquote, coming to pick a city, Dallas, Kansas City, whatever. And Tony found herself saying, well, first of all, we've never, if you're in the speaking world, nobody asks about your show. They're asking about your keynote. And that was what I mostly did. And so now they're saying, when's Jeannie's show coming to Kansas City, as an example? And Tony would say, well, she was in Kansas City four times last year, but then it dawned on us. But those people couldn't come in. Mm -hmm. Because they cannot come to meetings of which they're not a member. So it doesn't matter. It's like... The newspaper people in Kansas City don't really care that I'm at the such and such hotel doing a keynote, and here's why. Their readers can't go. Wow. 
Do, do you see the, the difference? They, they're not interested in doing this. So now, I'll tell you the difference in that in a second, but now, w- w- Tony's saying her show, well, she spoke in Kansas City, and then she had to stop because she knew they could, they were, the next question was going to be when she coming back to Kansas City, and it was going to be for the Missouri Plumbers or something, and they couldn't get in. So they were asking about a totally different thing. And that's when Al came back to me and said, you have name recognition to sell tickets two by two, one by one, on Ticketmaster, to strangers who have not heard you speak in person. I said, I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. And he said, well, are you willing to try? Well, sure. I'm willing to try. Fast forward. I broke my leg in December. Are you aware of that? Oh, yes. And I am so okay, sorry. Okay, it's been a But it's okay. I'm back speaking. I'll be okay. <laughs> but the, I've got a routine. I'm right. <laughs> But the only thing is, I was doing 49, I was doing 50-50. 50 speeches, say, to 51 shows or whatever. Now, the difference is that in the in the speaking world, they pay you a flat fee, not by head. Mm-hmm. And I learned a long time ago, people said, don't ever charge by the number who are coming. Because, and I, I, I can give you a good example, I spoke at a fashion show in the 70s. I was the MC and spoke, and I was real thrilled to get several hundred dollars. But nobody came. I was thinking I was going to get more by the head, but nobody came. The Duke Carolina game was on television that night. Mm -hmm. And everybody stayed home to watch it, and we had no VCRs. So you had no way. So I thought, this is it. you got to get your money up front. And so speakers in general get a flat fee. If the convention has 2,000 people, great crowd. If the convention has 250, you can have just as great a crowd, but it's two different things. But the show business wants you to sell those tickets. They want your name to sell the tickets. And so five or six years ago, I became a fierce Facebook person. I do not do, do, I have chosen what I want to do, how to market myself. And I've created a a fan base of many hundreds, I'm a hundred thousand people. Mm -hmm. And they want to know when I'm going to be in their town. So the day yesterday we announced that tickets were on sale for Memphis and Asheville for September shows. And we gave Facebook buddies a two-day head jump. Not a better price, a two-day head jump. Mm -hmm. And, And the theaters love it because you're selling their tickets for them. Mm-hmm. And they are mesmerized. Well, what has happened? Al was booking me in these theaters, and we said, we think we can do 800 seat halls. You know, let's book 800 seat halls. And um, then we went to 1,000. And we said, I wonder if we could ever book 2,000 seat halls. Because they pay you a flat fee plus extra for everything over that. Wow. So you have a chance to make more money. And as we learn the business, see, I can walk out on stage. I do an hour and a half, one woman show. I can tell any stories I want. They don't want to hear a lot of message. And at my age, I like it. I like it a lot. It's fun. Mm-hmm. And I have a meet and greet before and after because that's what we did in speaking. You never, I never walked in and just did my speech and walked out. Unless for some reason they had so many speakers lined up, that's the way they wanted us to do. I went to the reception. I went to here. So it's normal for me to do that. And now, when we look at those shows, uh, I think we had 2,300 in Atlanta last year. You could check with Al. You know, it just, we have 2,000 in Fort Worth. We had, you know, we, it, Dallas. Wow. Atlanta, and these are the biggest halls in the town. Now, if you go to a smaller town, the hall's not going to be as big, but it's as big as they had. And the, if the theater sells out, they are happy campers, and they want you for the next year. Well, the beauty of that is, for me, I've always known what made me successful in speaking. And if, you, if a speaker can figure out what makes me successful and do it and stick to it, and I know that you were talking about reinventing, but we've got speakers who reinvent themselves so much, nobody's really sure about what they do. <laughs> and with me, me, they know they're going to get humor. I might reinvent where I'm giving the humor, mm-hmm. but I've always known that humor, stories that I write, that's it for me. I'm not the highbrow person that's saving the world, 
but I'm filling seats and making money and having a ball. And having a ball would be the first in that list. But it, it's been, it has been fascinating what has happened to me. Now, how long will I be on Sirius XM every day? I don't know. I've been on now seven or eight years. And how long will I have YouTube? I have, I have 34 and maybe 34 million right now, 34 million and 793, I think it is, hits on YouTube. Wow. Well, we're feeding that. I work at that. I have figured out how to get those hits. And I have not figured out how to go viral with every story. So at NSA, often people say, how do you go viral? I said, if I knew how to go viral, every one of my clips would go viral. <laughs> True. <laughs> you know, come on. I wouldn't do it. I haven't mm -hmm. had that luck. But I do now have built up a base of people whom I can post on Facebook. I have a new clip. Here it is. Please share it with your friends. Mm -hmm. and they send it out for me. Do, do you see? Oh it's goodness. all falling into place. But I've always written so much material that last year before last, I did my eighth DVD in 16 years. Wow. And so that's an hour to an hour and a half of material, the last three, about an hour and a half. Okay, all different material except for one story that I retaped, and I got them to bring me back out and said, let me retake this. And uh, that's and that pushes me. Well, the theater shows and the people who booked the, what I call the big girls and boys, um, Betty White, and Dad, name these people that are really big in this. But they have now approached us mm. and Al. And the reason that they did was... Um, they get a report every week of every show in the country and the numbers. Mm. And all of a sudden, they start to see uh, a woman they've never heard of packing these houses. 1,500 people. How'd she get 1,500 people in such and such place? Mm -hmm. They called us and said, who are you and what are you doing? <laughs> how, can, how, can we, how can we book you? So we, we've arranged, and we're now working with APA, which is, you know, they have nine comedy divisions. And I've always called myself a humorist, not a comedian, mm -hmm. because the humorist imparts a message with the stories, and the comedian's only goal is to make you laugh. And the comedian can make you laugh by sending somebody else's race, religion, where they live, area of the, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. but we, I don't do, I don't do that. That's my background in speaking. You don't do that. Do, do you see? You just don't yeah. do that. So, so all of this is, and now the, the, the big theater people say to me, one of the reasons, and you talk, you could talk to Al McCree about it, one of the reasons we're so hepped up on Jeannie is that if she goes into a town and does a show and, and say this time it's three fourths full, which is still, if they were expecting the break-even mark to be 732 seats and and they wind up with 1,400, they are thrilled. They've made money, I have too. Mm -hmm. But the question is, now that we've started here, why can't we have her come back next year or the next and bring a different show? So what served me well at NSA, I, I did Southern Lady Magazine eight years in a row without the keynote without repeating a story wow. and if you can do that then for the theater world they're not real interested in investing money for you that says i'm going I, i've got the material i'm going to write a book i'm going to i'm gonna have a new speech next year when they found somebody that already has does that make sense without bragging? No, it does. And this is so good. Thanks for just the transparency, Jeannie. Yeah, it absolutely Well, it's does. just worked so well for me. I, I mean, I know you've got a time limit, but it's just, and and it's just been amazing. We have things on the projects now. Um, this is the 53rd year. And I don't even know anymore if I'm a speaker or an entertainer. Mm -hmm. but, but for years, I said I was a professional speaker. I have to say now that the general public views me as an entertainer. Mm -hmm. They don't even understand what professional speaking is unless they <laughs> saw you at their convention. we got to understand that. You know, oh, you make a living giving speeches, you know. You mm -hmm. speak, but, but the other, they understand. 
and this is our entertainer. I've always cringed, this is our entertainer, because I said, I'm a speaker, you know. In reality, when I enter into this other world, I'm an entertainer. They want to meet you. They want to know. I've developed a cast of characters. They're on every show, and they are in every uh, DVD and CD. People want to meet them. I mean, and they want to know, are they real? And, of course, they are. And and so it, it's kept me very excited. I'm 72, so it's kept me very excited because I speaking had gotten very easy for me. I could just keep putting out these DVDs and CDs and putting them on download and all that kind of stuff. But this is, I said, well, you know, I'm learning some new stuff here about tickets and back ends and, and that kind of stuff. But what I did pick up on quickly is, whereas I coasted for all those years and never marketed much, unless they needed something for their magazine or whatever, on this, I'm on radio interviews and TV interviews and you're working your head off. Sometimes the only day that I'm home, I will have six six radio interviews, and I'm trying to pre-study each one on the Internet, know who the hosts are. And see, that's because I'm helping the theaters market their shows. And all of that kind of stuff, I learned at NSA. Mm -hmm. 